but hi good morning hi uh, I was calling to see if I could book a viewing on a flat that you have up on road mm -hmm. yeah okay um well ideally it would be two bedrooms but um, if it had like an extra room like that one did Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. last vlog I am currently looking for a flat if this is your first time on my channel my name is Minnie I am a self-employed artist um, freelance illustrator and I live and work from home here in London I actually live with my mum but we have a good setup here um, I've actually got the whole top floor of this house and my own bathroom um, we split the bills evenly and for the last however long it's worked really well. Um, if you wanna see a kind of breakdown of how my bedroom or this top floor is split up into like a workspace and living space and bedroom, uh, I will have a video linked somewhere for you to watch. But I kind of feel like I have outgrown this space a little bit. I am looking to move in with my boyfriend and just kind of start the next chapter of my life now. So yeah, the uh, flat hunt has begun and I thought I would document it and share it all with you in case, you know, you guys are interested in moving out, if you're interested in uh, the London property market, which is so much fun, got to tell you, it is really, uh, it's a trip. So, um, so we've both been looking, my boyfriend and I, we've been looking mainly on like Zoopla and Rightmove. Um, obviously it depends where you're from, but there are always these websites that just compile different properties from all different estate agents. So we've been looking through there. I've also been looking at like specific estate, estate agent websites and just in shop windows and um, calling up estate agents as well, just in case there's things that aren't online yet. We have a viewing lined up for later today for a flat. Uh, it's not really, the one but I think we definitely need to just get the ball rolling with going and actually seeing things in person and at least you know discounting them so I'm a little bit downtrodden this morning just because um, out of the three estate agents that I rang um, about flats that we were interested in two are already under offer and one just didn't answer the phone one of the ones that is under offer was like our ideal flat it's the perfect location it's actually just like right there like right across the road from where I live now which is perfect because I am planning on renting continuing to rent out this room from my mum to use as like my shop and like office space uh, just so that I don't have to take all my postage supplies and all my prints and printers and all that extra stuff that goes with um, my kind of business um, I would like to just have an art space in my own flat and then do all my work over here so yeah being so close would be ideal I'd get to keep my doctor I'd get to keep my dentist uh, it was set in a really nice house um, perfect space everything was just ideal and it was under budget which is insane um, but yeah it's already under offer and that is what it's like here and I was prepared for that that's just the nature of London's property market it moves really quickly everything's overpriced and you know by the time you've called up about something someone's already taken it but the upside of that is that there are always new things being added, there are always new things coming onto the market every day, so you just got to keep moving with it and not get your heart set on anything. Even if you put in an offer on something and it gets accepted, you can't really fully uh, settle into it um, until both sides have signed the contracts. So yeah, I'm hopeful that there, I mean, I'm sure that there is something else out there for us. Um, it just means, you know, carrying on, carrying on the search. But for now, I am going to crack on with a bit of other work just to move past this particular loss. So 
If you have been following me, you might know that I have been out of the country for about three weeks. I was traveling around LA and San Francisco and then spent a week in Maui and it was amazing. <laughs> and I've been back for about four days now. And since then I've just been um, getting through all the work that piled up while I was away. I did take my laptop with me um, and did plan on doing work out there. And I did for like the first week. And then once I got to Maui, I just completely clocked out, switched off and just enjoyed being on a little break. But since I got back, I have just been working through a good hundred plus emails that came in. And also uh, I had about 90 plus orders that I had to package up and um, I'm getting ready to ship out. Um, you can see them up in the corner there, a little bag uh, to, yeah, I'm getting ready to take those to the post office today. But before that, I wanted to wait around. I was supposed to get a delivery today. I forwarded a load of stuff that had been piling up in my PO box. Uh, there was one more coming today, a bigger package, so they used a different shipping service and uh, it was supposed to come between 10 past 10 and 10 past 11 this morning. So I've just been waiting for that before I go to the post office. It is now just coming up to one o'clock and it's still not here. I just checked the uh, tracking and it says that it was delivered at 10.30 this morning and signed for by me, <laughs> which definitely didn't happen. So I'm just gonna kind of leave that um, head to the post office but before that I will be opening up the other things that I received. So first off I have a sketchbook from Winged Jedi. It's a Hannah Miller sketchbook and it was the perfect size to actually take with me on holiday so I got some good travel sketches in there. They also sent some of the uh, Hannah Miller like tiny bamboo sketchbooks that I really like. Um, I haven't been able to find them in this size anywhere so I'm really really grateful for this. I absolutely love these more than anything. They're so great for just doing little drawings that I can kind of not stress too much about. So thank you so much for this Winged Jedi. This is from Jess. It's a really cool, uh, big, nice big sticker, a potion. Um, she said it's for turning you into a mermaid and making you able to breathe underwater. She also does some amazing photography uh, based on what I can see on her business cards. So as always, I will be leaving everyone's info in the description if you wanna check them out. Thank you so much, Jess. It was lovely to hear from you. This print is from Tilly. She also sent a letter on the coolest stationery ever. I don't think you can see it there, but I will show you a proper close up. But yeah, I love the style of this. I love the line work and the colors. There's like a really nice, cozy, but almost moody feel to this one. So I really, really like this. Thank you so much, Tilly. Oh, this is nice. This is from Lena and she's actually made this adorable little sketchbook. I love a homemade sketchbook. They just have such a unique feel to them and this is so adorable and the perfect size for me. You guys know I love a tiny sketchbook, so thank you so much, Lena. Um, she also sent some teas, which is so cute. I really can't wait to try these. Um, there's strawberry cheesecake and blueberry muffin, so that is pretty exciting. I can't tell you any more about them though because all of the information is in German, but thank you so much, Lena. And finally, I've been in absolute watercolor heaven thanks to you guys recently. And just to top it all off, this came from May in Qatar. She's actually got an Etsy store where she sells handmade watercolor paints and she's put together a beautiful little set for me. So thank you so much, May. I cannot wait to use these. But yeah, that's it for all the packages. Thank you guys so much. It's always really nice to hear from you. I will have everyone's info listed below. I'll be heading out now to take all those orders out to the post office and I've just fingers crossed that my other package doesn't arrive while I'm out. Right, well, I got home just in time, just before the rain started. Um, it was a nice little stroll, actually, before the weather turns. Quite hot out still, hence why I am sweating. But I did manage to use the time wisely, use that walk wisely, and just keep an eye out for any places that might be to let along that journey. Um, most things are for sale or sold. Um, a couple of things up to let, but um, they're all already under offer as well. But, you know, it was a good little recon mission. Now I've got about... Uh, three hours until our very first viewing. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that Ozzy will be back from work in time to come with me because it's kind of a nerve wracking thing to do on my own and I know that he would really want to see it as well. I know that he's been on the phone with another estate agent while he's on his break just to talk about uh, a flat that we first saw, like one of the first ones they were supposed to get back to us about coming and doing a viewing, but they haven't yet. So I think it's one of those things that you just kind of have to stay on top of. But the fact that we haven't heard back isn't very promising. It probably is also already under offer now as well but there's plenty more houses out in the world I guess um but yeah till then 
I'm going to spend the rest of my time now just uh, working on a painting, I think, because it's been a long time since I've just sat down and made some art for fun. went well. It was bigger than we initially thought, um, but overall it just wasn't really the one. The kitchen was just like a cupboard with some work surfaces in it, and I think one of the major red flags was the kind of communal areas, like the shared areas that the, like the areas that that flat shared with its like neighbouring flats. It was just like filthy, dirty, full of like rubbish, um, and like a lot of just kind of passive aggressive notes from neighbour to neighbour that were all posted around. That just gave a kind of impression of what the atmosphere was like there, I guess. Yesterday we had another two viewings. Um, the first one, again, it was a nice space. It was quite small, but they used the space nicely. It was a really nice building as well. So yeah, we thought we'd snatch that up as quickly as possible if we really wanted it. But we went out of that one kind of eh, on the fence, just like on paper, it really worked, but the feeling when we were in there just didn't really click and I think we kind of figured out that it just felt a bit too grown up. I don't know if that makes sense, it just felt like it would be a really good space for us in maybe like three or four years time. Um, it was quite a family based area, very close to like a primary school, um, just very quiet and suburban and I do think that it just wouldn't really suit us right now. Like we would, we're not like the most disruptive loud people but we would like to have people around here and there that would be staying late and I don't want to disturb that kind of area that they've got going on there. So straight after that, we had like a 15 minute walk to our next viewing that day, which was just instantly a no. Um, we came in through the front door, walked up the stairs, there was an upstairs flat. And when you got to the end of the stairs, you got to what was supposed to be a landing, a hallway, as you would normally find in a house, but they had turned the hallway into the kitchen. Uh, so it was just a few surfaces of washing machine with a mini fridge on top of it and that was the whole kitchen. The floor was really uneven and weird. We had to walk through the kitchen to get to the bathroom which was quite dingy um, in itself and then bedroom was just about big enough for a double bed and the front room was, I mean it was alright but the amount of space and just the standard of it and the amount of money that they were asking for just was like an instant no and we didn't really mess about with that one. We just kind of, you know, shook the guy's hand. So we are trying to get as many viewings as we can, but so far it's only been three just because uh, by the time, you know, things get listed up and you call, uh, I've had loads of estate agents just not answer the phone. I guess they're super busy, but um, it's been a case of having to call back and call back and call back. Um, it's kind of difficult finding time to go and do viewings. I think I'll probably do some on my own just because Ozzy's work hours are really um, kind of difficult to work around. Like today he's working from nine till 11 o'clock at night. So it's hard to find a time where we can both go and see these places. And I know that he trusts my judgment to go and see them on my own. So we'll do a bit more of that. But yeah, at the moment we're just, I've got all like my email alerts set up. So on these websites I was talking about earlier, I put in our search criteria and if anything comes up within that, within those parameters, I'll get an email straight away and then I will just ring people straight away to see if we can get a viewing. But um, we're going to put that on hold just for a few days because we are away for this weekend for my friend's birthday. Uh, it's funny because I've been vlogging for a year now 
Um, so if you look back at my vlog from this time last year, it's the same, same thing, we go away to the country, we do a costume party last year, uh, the theme was Roll Doll, I was Lavender uh, from Matilda and I actually won, but this year I just haven't really had time to um, sort out a costume, so it's theme is Matrix, I've just got some little round oval sunglasses that I'm going to wear. And after that, uh, we've got a few more that we're kind of looking into. Um, and to keep track of everything, um, well, for fun mainly, I'm actually currently drawing everywhere that we have looked at, just I think it would be a nice thing to look back on when, um, when we finally found somewhere. But in a more kind of official way of keeping track of everything that we're looking at, I do also have a notebook where I'm writing down all the different um, properties that we're looking into and like where we are progress-wise with those. So for example, I've got the date here, um, and I'll probably show you this, but I might like blur stuff out just because of privacy. But yeah, I put the name of the road, um, uh, which estate agent is going through, how much the rent is, um, and then what we've done in terms of pursuing it. So for example, uh, this top one, Aussie's called the estate agent and the landlord will be in touch. That was like six days ago now. So we've been back in touch with them again, still not heard back. So that doesn't seem very promising, but it's good to know when we first contacted them and where we were at with that because otherwise I feel like we, with the amount that we've looked at we'd be wondering oh yeah whatever happened to that flat on such and such road and so on and so on I just have a list of all the things that we have done so far and anything else that's coming up and when it comes to like closing off on one I just kind of underline it and make sure that I know that that's one that we've been and seen and we're not really interested in anymore but it's all here in case I want to come back and make maybe revisit flats that we've looked into. But I thought while I go about things today, it'd be a good time to um, talk about what we are actually looking for, um, since I haven't really touched on that yet. Okay, so I forgot that just going to Ikea to have a look is a thing that I can't do without picking up lots of plants. I also picked up just a stool and some more shelves for my workspace area just to take into account the things I'm going to be taking from it when I move. Now I thought I would start this list of criteria with a quick disclaimer. I know that uh, London is overpriced. I know that for a lot of people it is overrated but for me it is home. Um, it has always been home and for this period of my life at least it will remain my home. Um, I am willing to pay that premium despite what other people might think. Um, this is where I was born and raised, this is where everything I know is and everything I love. There really hasn't been anywhere that's felt as perfect for me as here. Where am I going to put all these? So with that being said, I would say that our main criteria, both mine and Aussie's, is location. Um, we are both from South East London, so um, kind of grew up in the New Cross, Peckham, Lewisham areas. Um, obviously, if that doesn't mean anything to you, uh, it's south of the river, obviously, and also um, zone two. So if central London, all the things that you see of as London, the London Eye, Big Ben, all those things, you know, Oxford Street, um, that's zone one, that's like central London. Outside of that um, is zone two which is where we live and then it goes on to like zone seven or eight now um, so obviously we're close enough to central London to benefit from having really easy access and just great transport here um, perfect transport here that's like my favorite thing um, but yeah really good access to all the things um, being able to go in and out of London really easily but also uh, it's obviously a tiny bit cheaper than being in central London also being south of the river you do pay less as well that being said our search area that we've been looking in has actually been getting smaller and smaller just thinking that the area that I live in right now is just perfect. It's, I don't drive, I hate driving. Um, so I'm always getting public transport or walking and everything that I need right now in my life is within like a half hour walking radius. Like all my friends, like 90% of my friends I can walk to, um, family, I can walk to their houses. I can walk to two different train stations within about 10 minutes um, to get to central London in about 15 minutes to get outside of London if I need to. All the buses I could ever possibly want are on my doorstep. I've got my doctors, my dentist, um, loads of green space around here as well. The post office and any other services that I tend to use for my work, as well as a few galleries and um, restaurants and pubs, just so close, so close by to here. So 
just seems like the perfect spot for us right now. great seeing that the mini zines are still in high demand. Um, if you do want to get your hands on them, if you haven't got your hands on one yet, I will have a link to my shop in the description as well. So after location, our next priority obviously is budget. Um, obviously that's not something that you can really get around. We've kind of decided on a number that we can afford. Um, it's obviously more than we would like to be spending a month, but uh, yeah, I mean, what can you do? I will say I don't really necessarily want to say exactly how much we are looking at but um, let's just say it's more than a thousand and less than two thousand. One thing obviously to bear in mind with your monthly rent budget is council tax so I've had been I've been looking at um, the different council tax rates for the flats that we've been looking at. You can actually find them online you can search the address of the flat and just search council tax and they will tell you what band it's in and then you can look up um, how, how much that would equate to. For the most part we're looking at band C that's what everything has turned out to be so far so that's kind of mid-range and that would add up to another hundred pounds a month so think about that and kind of factor that into however much you plan on spending maximum on rent a month. The only other kind of non-negotiable for us, I guess, is space and light. So I think I might have mentioned before, but I am planning on doing all of my art there. So I do need a kind of dedicated space for doing that. And obviously um, making art and making videos, I do need a lot of natural light as well. So it would be great to have somewhere that obviously isn't a basement or just has some good windows. Um, and we initially started looking at two bedroom places, but we've kind of broadened our search now to uh, one bedroom places with maybe like extra space in the living room for me to do stuff as well. And that's really it for our kind of main things that we're looking for. Everything else would be a bonus. So we're thinking it would be nice to have some outside space maybe, but you know, as I said, we're kind of near a lot of parks and things and greens anyway, so it wouldn't be a disaster if we weren't, if we didn't have a little garden. Also, um, Ozzy is a chef. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that on this channel, but yeah, he's a chef. He also loves cooking, so a good kitchen for him would be amazing. And a social kitchen. I'm not a huge fan of open plan living. Just a kitchen where there would be space for me to sit down and be with him while he's cooking would be great, because I do like doing that. That's it, really. Um, not really interested in things like the outside curb appeal, um, the type of building that it is, we would look at like new builds, purpose built flats, um, conversions of houses, uh, ex council flats. Yeah, I'm really not interested in what it looks like on the outside, just as long as there's a good amount of space inside and if it's in the right location, I'll be happy. And I know I've been talking a lot about me and what I want, um, and that's because Ozzy's not here a lot of the time and obviously I can't speak for him, but we've been really lucky in this search that we've been very much on the same page with exactly what we both want from this flat, even down to, you know, we've had a few chats about how we might like to furnish and decorate it and we're, yeah, very much on the same page with all of it, which is just such a bonus and I feel like it's really rare. Um, but yeah, it's made things a lot easier to know that we both want the same things from this flat. It was the perfect weekend. It was lovely and cosy and intimate. I didn't film any of it because I just wanted to enjoy being in that moment. However, just before all that, things were frantic. Um, so the last time I spoke to you, I think was a Friday. Later that evening, um, that night, about a seven o'clock, I was looking at the property website, just as I normally do in the evening. And I saw a flat that I really liked. I sent it to Ozzy while he was at work. Uh, while he's at work, he's always very vague with his text. So he just texted back saying, I like it. And when he got home, we had a look. By then it was quite late at night. The estate agents was already closed. 
but we liked the look of it a lot, a lot, a lot, uh, to the point that we couldn't really sleep that night. We were so excited and anxious to go and see it. So the next morning, first thing, we rang the estate agents. Luckily, they were open on a Saturday and we asked to go for a viewing at the flat um, that morning. And they said they didn't have any availabilities, but they did have an opening that afternoon. Uh, this was the afternoon that we were supposed to be catching that train to go and head out to the country for our friend's birthday. But we decided that we could postpone that trip uh, or postpone our journey at least and uh, make it to that afternoon viewing. They did say on the phone that there would be three other couples viewing the flat at that time, um, which was kind of stressful knowing that it had only just gone up on the website the night before and there were already three other people going to see it. So clearly a popular uh, flat and for good reason. It was beautiful and light and spacious, a great location. It was just ideal for us, especially because for me it was, it's just across the road from where I live right now. So being able to go back and forth from there every single day so that I can use this space as my workspace and still live over there would just be perfect. It really couldn't be a better location. So yeah, we barely slept. We woke up first thing the next morning. I was like a proper ball of anxiety that morning, really just anxious to get in there and have a look. and worried that it was going to get snapped up by someone else because that's happened a lot uh, in this journey already. Things don't stay available for long and if you're not the first one in there it really seems like it's unlikely that you'll get it. So we went for the viewing, we absolutely loved it and we walked straight to the estate agents from the viewing. Uh, we brought our like wallets and uh, said we wanted it. We said that we would take it and they asked for 400 pounds up front in cash so we had to go to the cash point to get that money out and um, luckily we brought our wallets with us and our id so yeah we had to get 400 pounds out there and then as a fee of interest um just to say yeah we are serious we do want it and um, while we were out at the cash point by the time we got back they'd already had another phone call of someone else wanting to uh, come and see it so luckily we had got in there and they told those people that it's already been taken. I don't know, it was very uh, rushed, it was very quick, it was all very kind of urgent. So we gave that money, we signed some papers just to say that we are interested and they gave us our own paperwork. Um, so we have the receipt for the fee of intent, which is what they called it, the £400 that we had to give up front. It also lays out some of the things that we agreed on. So um, the address, uh, the term of the uh, lease, we said we'd go for a 12 month fixed lease. Um, the proposed move-in date, which is the 27th of September, which is, I guess, about a month from now. It has information here on the next few payments that we're going to have to make and we were prepared for fees that is one thing that we have been saving up for before this um, it's never as simple as just picking a place and having it and uh, you know you move in and then you start paying for things obviously right off the bat you need to pay for quite a lot of stuff uh, straight away so there has been a fee for their referencing they need to find references for us to make sure that we're good people um, it's been a bit of a difficult one but I'll get around to that in a bit um, so that was 40 pounds each so 80 pounds altogether um they want one month's rent in advance um six weeks deposit as well and uh there's an administration fee plus the 400 pounds we've already paid it has come to 3497 pounds up front um which luckily you know we have saved for and that i guess would be my advice to you guys i don't think it would be that much for everything i think um this is through Winkworth and I think if you went like directly to a landlord it might not be that expensive up front but it's a lot to pay at once but um, if it means that we get this flat then we're quite happy to do that. So since then it's been a roller coaster of ups and downs. Uh, first it was so exciting we were we left that estate agent on a high we went straight to the train station headed off for our little weekend away all our friends were really excited for us uh, then we got back to uh, receive some emails from them they were looking for uh, quite a few different things so they wanted like um, ID and they wanted like bank statements and um, references from employers from previous landlords and that's where we ran into a few issues just because we both have lived at home before this so we don't have 
references from a previous landlord, um, but we have provided character references in place of that. We also, um, Aussie works, so he could provide an employer's reference, but I am self-employed. So I needed, so what they wanted from me was like statements from my accountant. Now I don't have an accountant and I would say, a few people have messaged me about this as well, asking if I have advice. Um, about getting a flat, especially in London, I think they're very strict and there's such a high demand that they really will go for kind of the easiest that they can get. And so it's difficult for people who are self-employed to be able to prove that they can pay that rent. And especially without an accountant, I do feel like that has set me back a bit. However, I did provide um, last my last year's um, self-assessment tax return as well as three months of bank statements. Uh, even with all this, they have come back and said that I'm gonna need a guarantor. Um, again, I understand, you know, they just wanna make sure that that rent is gonna be paid when you're self-employed. It's harder to um, guarantee that you're gonna be able to pay things. So they are looking for a guarantor, but this is where things have got a little bit um, difficult because the guarantor requirements are really, really strict. They want um, someone that is earning over £27,000 a year. Um, they also have to be a homeowner and they want um, that person's financial records and they also want their passport and ID. And I think they also need a reference about that person. So obviously that's something that I can't ask of many people in my life. It's something that obviously you would only ask for from close family and maybe family friends. The problem is that, you know, how many people do I know that are earning that much and also are homeowners? Um, unfortunately, my mum, uh, is a homeowner, but she's retired, so she's not earning that much. My sister earns that much, but she's renting, she doesn't own her own home. My dad owns his own home, but he is also a freelancer, so he's in the same position as I am it's in terms of being as reliable uh, a like financial source. Uh, I don't know, I guess it's regulations, it's policies, but it has been quite stressful, kind of worrying. My fear is that, you know, um, is it gonna be like this for everywhere we look at if this doesn't work out? Am I going to be the reason that Ozzy and I can't get a flat right now? I don't know if having an accountant would have made this process easier. At the end of the day, I still don't think I earn enough for them to be 100% sure that I'd be able to pay the rent. Um, so my last kind of correspondence with them was yesterday. I asked, I've kind of explained my situation. I've also said, uh, which is kind of an extreme thing, but I've offered to pay six months rent up front you know if if they need assurance that i can pay the rent i am willing to pay my half of the rent for six months like they don't need to worry for six months if i'm earning money or not because i will give it to them up front so yeah it's another big kind of reason why saving is important i think in this position if you are self-employed the best thing you can do for yourself is have like a large lump sum of money whether you're going for renting somewhere or you're going for a mortgage having like a substantial bit of money behind you where you can prove and kind of assure them these lenders or these landlords or whoever that you are financially stable and that you can um you know pay pay ahead so they don't need to worry about whether you'll be able to pay in the future that's all i can really suggest and who knows if this will work um if worse comes to worse i'm sure i'll find a guarantor somewhere i think you know aussie's parents or aunts and uncles you know that's my next kind of place to go like I'm dead set on getting this place and I do think we'll make it work somehow but yeah it has been difficult it's been stressful and then there's also the kind of retrospective have we rushed into this flat thing just because we we did rush into it so quickly you know we saw it within about 12 hours of first seeing it on the website we had already put in our offer so it's kind of a big deal and you know, there are loads of questions that maybe we should have asked on the viewing that like when we go to and um, when we go to view places, there are certain things that we'll always look for, like damp and just the overall quality of a place. I've always checked the taps like on the top floor as well, just to make sure the water pressure is all right. Um, just checking like for drafts around windows, checking just for signs of any signs of disrepair, signs of like bad things going on in like the communal areas as well. Um, and it seems like a very, very well maintained flat. Um, there were no uh, red flags for me um, and also it was being lived in at the time that we looked around so I don't think it's something that they could have covered up if there were problems like if there was a damp problem there was someone in there that morning we'd be able to see if there was damp and condensation so like I said it's very up and down with like feeling really excited and also feeling really scared and also just feeling 
really um, exasperated by it at points. Like, I don't know what else I can do to get the things that I've been working for. I've been saving now for a good two years just to try and set myself up in the best way possible. And at the end of the day, I'm always gonna be at the mercy of a lender or a landlord. Um, but we'll see what happens. I don't think it'll be long before we find out. So uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. So I'm just getting ready to go to Ozzy's. He's making dinner. We're just gonna have a nice casual one. Um, obviously we're trying to save money at the moment, um, go out as little as possible basically. But yeah, it's something that I think we have needed to do, um, just have a little date night. It seems like for the last few weeks, all of our conversations have just been about finances and contracts and uh, guarantors and you know, who's taking care of this and who's paying for that. So yeah, it's, it would be nice to just have a nice chill time, actually kind of make an effort just to make an effort, if you know what I mean. As exciting and as fun as this whole experience is and has been, um, I'll be real with you guys, it definitely is kind of stressful and a bit of a strain, which is to be expected, you know, you have a lot of serious conversations and it's a lot of commitment and obviously overall it's all worth it it all um pays off in the end and i'm really just looking forward to moving in somewhere and actually starting that chapter of our lives but yeah for right now it's just like the annoying awkward stage where most of the stuff that's going on is like planning and conversations and very little actual action so that being said uh the estate agents got back to me, they couldn't accept my mum as a guarantor, which I kind of expected, um, but it was just worth asking, I guess. Um, because although she is a homeowner, she doesn't earn £27,000 a year from her pension, which I think is kind of an insane thing to ask of anyone, like I don't know what the average pension is, but uh, my mum gets about 10% of that a year, so yeah, that was never going to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm now in the position where I am going to have to pay six months rent up front, which isn't ideal um, because the money that I do have saved to allow me to do that was money that I was hoping to use to like start furnishing our new place. But you know, it's not the end of the world. I have a lot of furniture here that we can take and really we don't need much. Like, you know, I'll just be happy to be in there and have our own space and just gradually build up, build up the things that we want to fill it with. Yeah, I hope I don't come across as too negative in this video. Like I would never want to discourage anyone that's on this same journey. I just want to be as real as possible and honest as possible. I just want to share the whole journey. Um, Cause as well as vlogging it for you guys, it would be a great thing to look back on for me as well. As I said, it's been a year since I started vlogging. So we've passed a lot of kind of milestones together. I also always worry when I'm making videos that are more uh, transparent and honest that, um, I don't know, people that aren't familiar with my channel or me, I don't know, they tend to judge and just kind of make assumptions, um, especially when you're talking about finances and things. Um, so it's always a bit of a daunting thing to do, but I feel like there's a lot to learn from other people's experiences so I guess it's worth it to have to deal with a few people that want to um, make assumptions and make judgments about others. Anyway, time to go. <laughs> So, it has been 22 days since we first started calling up estate agents and going for viewings, and I think 17 days since we put an offer in to that flat. 
Uh, it seems, seems like so much longer, but it's actually going really quickly. Um, 23 days now till uh, our proposed move-in date. And everything's still up in the air. Um, they're just going over all our references and paperwork and things at the moment. Once all that's been verified, they will send over the payment schedule for the rest of the money that needs to be paid. So the deposit and the month's rent and the estate agent fees, all of those things. And then obviously my six months rent on top of that as well. So until those things have been paid, I really am not ready to settle into the idea that this is actually happening. Um, I've heard a lot of horror stories about people uh, who've got to this point and, you know, a few days before it's time to move in, the landlord will say it's cancelled or just things will fall through. So I'm not really letting myself fully accept the thought that this flat is ours, um, but I'm holding out hope. I really do think this is going to happen, but I am going to wait a little while, wait till at least that money's been paid until I start thinking about packing and decluttering and uh, buying new things for the new place. Um, then I think I'll make a whole new vlog about that. Anyway, so today is a really exciting day because I'm actually about to leave for the Well Child Awards. Um, if you don't know, Well Child is a charity here in the UK. They raise money for children with serious illnesses and special needs. Their main aim is to, you know, provide funds to families that need care, um, special care, and, and just really um, make an effort to have these children and young people uh, spend more time at home and, you know, doing the things that they want to be doing rather than in care facilities and hospitals. Just try to put the resources behind them and their families to allow them to live their lives more freely. And so every year they hold an award ceremony. It's an amazing event. Um, they've got Prince Harry is one of the patrons, so he's always there. Meghan Markle's going to be there this year as well, which is so exciting. They always have performances. I know Diversity tend to do a lot for Well Child, so they've been there performing at least a couple of times. This year it's going to be Ashley and Sully because Pudsey unfortunately is no longer with us. But yeah, the reason that I'm going is because my sister has been put forward for one of the awards. She is a carer and nanny for children with really severe disabilities. She also works in a school, she teaches, um, she does music therapy and her main goal at the moment is to start a charity um, to set up a space that she's planning to call that special place. It's going to be kind of a sensory activity centre, um, somewhere that children can go after school or during the holidays to just enjoy themselves and kind of take some of that pressure off their parents. Um, I know childcare is so expensive anyway and with you know, the extra needs added on top for disabled children. It's just somewhere that they can go and really just enjoy some quiet time and fun time. So yeah, she's been put forward for one of these awards by one of the families that she works with. They nominated her and it's just, I couldn't be more proud. I mean, she is the most caring person in the world and I've always known this, like my whole life she's taken care of me. She's the kind of person she'll always put other people before herself. She's always done so much She's done so much for me my whole entire life um, and I know that even now she would drop anything just to be there to take care of me like it's just something that she does so naturally and so to see her being appreciated and acknowledged for that by other people is just incredible and I'm, I'm so proud and I'm so excited and I want to stop talking now before I ruin my makeup anymore. I put extra effort in today because just like on the off chance that Meghan Markle spots me from afar for a split second, I want to be looking my best. But yeah, um, we're going to head off right now. It's going to be such an amazing night and I can't wait to take you guys with me. And I'll have information below as well about Well Child if you are interested in some of the amazing stuff that they do. <laughs> The story that we've all just heard of resilience, strength and spirit and the power of working together were without doubt incredibly moving and motivating. They really sum up what World Child is all about. <laughs> She's, she's really special and I'm sure there's more people like her and I feel honoured to have her in my life. So we have less than two weeks now until we move in. Uh, paperwork still isn't 
fully finished. Uh, we haven't paid our deposit yet. So um, until that's done, we can't actually book our moving date officially. So it's still not 100% official yet, but we're close enough. I think next few days that paperwork will finally come through. Um, they just send over the bill for how much money we owe them and how to pay it. Um, but yeah, that will be part of the next vlog, I guess. I wanna start a new vlog of like, preparing to move, buying things, and uh, just the things that we're going to stock up on, and packing and decluttering and all that, that'll be in the next vlog, so stay tuned for that. Before we finish off, I don't know if you remember right at the beginning of this video, I was supposed to receive a package, and then the tracking said that I had signed for it, but it never got delivered. I finally, finally, weeks and weeks later, and £30 later as well, got my hands on that package, and it was a planner and some stickers from a company called Pipstick, so thank you guys so much for that. Um, I also recently picked up the stuff in my PO box. I had this awesome book about creative block and different artists kind of advice for getting past it. This was from my Amazon wishlist and it was sent to me by Shauna Fitzpatrick. So thank you so much for that, Shauna. Uh, thank you for everything. Um, it's always nice to see your name popping up in the comments and getting this from you in person is just awesome. Thank you so much. This is the planner I got. It's a 17 month planner um, and it's in collaboration with uh, Workman. Um, so Pipsticks are the sticker company and Workman, I guess, do the planning. Um, but I actually got a letter in with this from the like CEO of the company. So that was really sweet of her to like personally write that out for me. So yeah, thank you Mo. Thanks for being so generous. These stickers are awesome. And so are the notebooks as well. I got this notebook slash sketchbook and a really cool zine from, I want to say Tiana or Tihana, but uh, yeah, thank you Tiana. Thank you so much. I love the line work in this scene. I think it's awesome, um, brilliant, brilliant work. Another person it was really lovely to hear from was Caroline. Um, Caroline's name is one of those names that I recognize like straight away. So thank you so much. Um, she sent me some uh, metallic watercolors, I guess. I don't know if these are technically watercolors, but some metallic paints. This really beautiful like beginner's starting set um, for calligraphy from, I think it's from a company called Quill. She wrote a really sweet letter, but my favorite thing is this original piece of art of hers. Uh, it's got like lovely gold details and I am just a sucker for a monstera leaf. So thank you so much, Caroline. Um, as I said, it's just always lovely to hear from you. Got a really sweet letter from Carolina or Carolina um, with this awesome sketchbook in it. This is um, by an artist that she actually told me loads about, an artist from Poland. And she also sent um, her own painting of her pet chinchillas. I hope you can see that because it's just so adorable. So thank you so much. I love the control of the watercolor that you have here. It's really like beautifully, delicately done. So great work. And thank you so much for getting in touch and for teaching me a little something about an artist that I'd never heard of. This print that I got is just gorgeous quality. Um, it actually has like a finish with, I think I'm guessing gold leaf, which is just an awesome touch. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful painting and a really, stunning quality print as well also came with this one i love the paper that you've done this on it actually feels like a watercolor painting that i'm holding in my hand those are from Haley. she also wrote a really sweet letter and as always again i will reiterate everyone's details will be below so please do check them out there are so many gorgeously talented people out there and i'm sure they'd be so grateful to have you check out their work i got a really cool uh, selection of prints from jessica um she actually sent this one framed which is awesome and they just have this gorgeous like really unique quality to them and i love that this one is framed i can't wait to put this somewhere so thank you so much jessica i love these i actually can't wait to put these up in the new house so these prints are from maris or maris who also goes by chaos and cosmos online so i thought these would look really nice like all lined up next to each other maybe in frames they also got um sticker can't wait to use that and uh, a lovely larger print as well then there's this lovely intricate detailed work from sophia this is really really beautiful so much just pure quality to it uh, I feel very lucky to have this one I just think it's absolutely stunning so thank you so much Sophia her letter as well really just um, made my day so thank you right and this one is from Christina Christina um, and every time I open it I forget that it's full of glitter so I'm just <laughs> trying to clean myself up a bit here she sent some really cool stickers and these awesome just such cool designs of enamel pins. I know that you guys would love these as well, so please do check her out. Um, thank you so much, Christina, as well. The glitter in the package is a lovely bonus, but a nightmare to clean up. 
so that's it for today. Thank you so much again to all the people that take the time to write to me, um, whether it's by email or just in the comments. Um, thanks for taking the time to watch these videos. Um, it's always lovely to have you guys along here with me. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing the next little chapter of this journey with you guys and I will see you in that video.